Good morning God's people, this is Sunday March the 20th and uh, this is our time to worship the Lord our God. The psalm is called to worship this morning is found in Psalm 34 and verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Uh, this is the call for us to understand that God's eyes is always upon us at all times even as we come before him this morning to worship him let us turn to the word of God this morning his word is found in the book of Ezekiel in the book of Ezekiel that is really the uh, and the minor prophets the book of Ezekiel we will be reading Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 to verse 28 Ezekiel 1 verse 1 to verse 28 in the 30th year in the fourth month of the fifth day while I was among the exile by the Kaba River the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God on the fifth of the month it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiakim the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel the priest the son of Buzi by the Keba river in the land of the Babylonians there the hand of the Lord was upon him. I looked and I saw uh, wind storms coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightnings and surrounded by brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal and uh, and the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance, their form was that of a man, but each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight. Their feet were like those of calf and gleamed like uh, uh, like a burnished bruise, bronze under their wings on their four sides they had the hands of a man all four of them had faces and wings and their wings touched one another each one went straight ahead they did not turn as they move. Their faces look like this. Each of the four had the face of a man, and on the right side each had the face of a lion, and on the left side the face of an ox. Each also had the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. Their wings were spread out upward. Each had two wings. One touched the wing of another creature on either side and two wings covering its body. Each one went straight ahead. Whenever the spirit would go, they would go without turning as they went. The appearance of the living creatures were, uh, was like burning coals of fire or like torches. Fire moved back and forth among the creatures. It was bright and lightning flashed out of it. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes of lightning. 
as I look at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. This was the appearance or and structure of our wheels. They sparkle like chrysolite and all four look alike. Each appearance to be each appeared to be like a wheel inter intersecting a wheel as they move they would go in any one of the four directions the creatures the creatures face the wheels did not turn around as the creatures went the rims were high and awesome and all four rims were full of eyes all around when the living creatures moved the wheel beside them moved and when the living creatures rose from the ground the wheels also rose wherever the spirit would go they would go and the wheels would rise along with them because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels when the creatures move they also move when the creatures stood still they also stood still and when the creatures rose from the ground the wheels rose along with them because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheel spread out above the heads of the living creatures was what looked like a expanse sparkling like ice and awesome under the expanse their wings were straight out one towards the other each had two wings covering each body when the creatures move i heard the sound of the of their wings like the roaring of rushing waters like the voice of the almighty like the turmoil of army of an army when they stood still they they lowered their wings then there came a voice from above the expanse over the heads as they stood with lowered wings above the expanse over their heads was what looked like a throne of uh, sapphire and high above on the throne was a figure like that of a man i saw that from what appeared to be his waist up full of fire and that from there down he looked like fire and brilliant lights surround him like the appearance of rainbow and the clouds on a rain day on a rainy day so was the radiance around him this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord when I saw it I fell face down and I heard the voice of the one speaking the word of the Lord to us this morning may the Lord bless it to our hearts as we look into the, the his word together it's the time to go to before the Lord in prayer. Yes, when we go before the Lord in prayer, we know that 
our God is alive and well. He is well able to hear us and to answer our prayers. So let's go before him this morning, still praying for one another, praying for our families, our friends, our neighbors. Pray for this world. War is warring. Pray for peace. Pray that the Lord will preserve, especially his people, among all these. Let us continue to pray for the authorities here in, in this country as they make decisions. Let us remember to pray for COVID-19 because it is still with us. Let us pray for our families and the children, the young people, our seniors. Let us lift them all up before God in prayer. Please join me as we pray together. We come to you, O oh God, because you call us to come. We pray to you because you invite our prayers. You assure us that we are not only heard but that our prayers will be answered through those sometimes in ways we do not expect we recognize O oh lord this morning that your ways are not our ways help us to be open to your will as you are open to our cry Father, the God of this universe, the God of nature, O oh Father of all of, of us all, who is above all of us, yet you are in all. Make us grateful, Heavenly Father, for the sense of seeing, for the capacity to hear to smell to feel to taste make us ever sensitive to all expressions of your grace in the world about us the glory of the morning hour the refreshment of the cool breeze that invigorates the technicolor of life in the trees the shrubs the flowers the sky the sea even as we anticipate spring to make his way among us with all the beauty the beauty of it with all the colors and all the smell and all the presence of nature May the matter of fact orientation of this scientific age never blind us to the glamour, to the romance, to the wonder, to the mystery of life all around us. If in the means of all the excitement, color and variety of nature about us we find ourselves yearning at life. Take the demons of our soul away. Provoke us from confirming ways that we may be transformed from within by the renewing of our minds to all the uniqueness of our creation as a person. O oh Lord, O oh you who have called us into being through the creative power of your love and who have called us again and again to be, grant us such, such attentiveness in the moments of worship 
that we may hear your call again. May we respond with faith according to our unique opportunity in our love and concern for one another may we discover that we are made whole no man lives and no man dies unto himself for those who anxiously uh, toast on beds and pain especially those our fellow human beings in Europe and other places in the world that are toasting and pain inflicted on them by others. We, O oh Lord, pray for their health. We pray for a stop to the war. But if death be more merciful father for some we must pray you will have your will done on earth as it is in heaven your will be done may we who have our work our families and our friends not be insensitive to the needs of others for a sense of usefulness and belonging. May we not turn from the pain, the hurt, and what is tragic among us, but seek those inexhaustible resources of your love by which we may be the church to the sick, the church to the lonely, the church to those who are bereaved the church to those who are depressed and discouraged the church to the strange with them may we not just survive our merely cope but win the victory that is present for all of us in the Lord Jesus Christ we come before you this morning we pray for the for COVID-19 we pray for the families that have suffered loss of their families we pray oh Lord for those who are finding life is very expensive right now and that they are not able to nourish themselves and their family. We pray that you as the great provider, you will provide for them. We pray, O oh Lord, for the sick. We pray for the young people. We pray for the children and the seniors in our means. We lift them up before you. You are at work in this world. Even with all the st storms that are going on right now, not only in the world, but in our lives, in our community, we testified and believe that you are at work in this world. And this world is still our Father's world. You so love the world and all the peoples in it that you have come in person not to condemn to death but but to offer the gift of life to all those who will open their uh, their hearts to receive you as lord and savior what a day this day can be in the liberation of all humankind from the fears of war and the threats of war from the disease from the starvation from the illiteracy if we have the vision to grasp the new thing that you are seeking to do in these tremendous times 
we pray for the leaders of nations we pray especially for our prime minister we pray for the president of the united states we pray for our leaders that they may not just act as or react without modded cliches of another day but respond to the living word that you are speaking today to us open our hearts as you speak so that your word may penetrate us we pray for the uh, fledging leaders in other uh, countries who struggle with new structures to express and preserve the new won freedoms of their people we pause at this time and we pray for the leaders of the countries that are at war grant them wisdom to lead their people through these trying times and now O oh father grant us the faith the courage the grace to live as we have prayed through whom your word is complete for men and for nations and is among us teaching us to pray and to live come lord jesus and teach us to pray the prayer of faith the prayer that our lord has taught us our father what in heaven our lord be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen so now please turn to the word of the Lord to, that was read to us from the book of Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 1. The title for God's word to us this morning is Finding God in the Storm. Yes, God can be found at all times in the adverse circumstances but especially God can be found in the midst of our storms. My text this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 4. Ezekiel said, I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud in a fire in unfolding itself in a brightness was about it and out of the means thereof as the color of amber out of the means of the fire in the niv we always like to make the comparison for you so that you can understand the word of god better verse 4 of Ezekiel chapter 1 in the NIV looked I saw a wind storm coming out of the north an immense cloud with flashing lightning and uh, surrounded by brilliant light the center of the fire looked like glowing metal yes we can find God in the midst of our storm. The next few weeks we will be looking together in the book of Ezekiel. We will stop to commemorate our Easter time 
and then we will get back again in the book of Ezekiel. I, I hope by the end of it you will be familiar with the message that God has given to his servant Ezekiel to pass on to us. If we were to take a poll, indeed, among Bible students to discover which is the strangest and most difficult book in the Bible to understand, I am pretty sure and assure you today that the prophecy of the book of Ezekiel would be among those vain for the, for the top spot that the book of Ezekiel would be named among one of the hardest book to understand in the Bible. Although there are those of you who may really say that the book of Revelation is to you. But let's go through the book of Ezekiel and see what you would say after you have gone through it. I hope you have had time in the past to read this great book. But if not, what an opportunity to go ahead of me and start reading the book of Ezekiel and read it over and over again as we prepare our hearts for God's message every Sunday in the book. Difficult book indeed in the Bible to understand the book of Ezekiel. The prophecy of Ezekiel would be among those book of the Bible that is very challenging to us and to our soul. Ezekiel was a young Hebrew priest who was a visionary and who had a vivid imagination. We would have called him uh, nowadays that he was very creative. He was a descendant of the family of Zadok, the noble Hebrew priest who could trace his lineage directly from Aaron, the brother of Moses. The family of Zadok was one of the nobles' families in Jerusalem. Thus, born into this priestly family, Ezekiel became a priest when he was just a young man. He was well educated and exposed to the highest culture Jerusalem afforded. Then one day, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came with his army and laid siege against Jerusalem. King Jehoshakim of Judah surrendered the city to Nebuchadnezzar and 7,000 of the best people in the city, including members of the priestly family like Ezekiel, the nobility, the artisans, the skilled people were taken away captive to Babylon. Among these captives was the young priest that is before us this morning, the young Ezekiel. Apparently, Ezekiel was a man of some wealth and dotlessly he took a considerable portion of his wealth with him was he was when he was dragged from the city of Jerusalem and then to Babylon. He had a home. He had a wife and possibly a family. He lived in a, a comparative ease and comfort in the banks of the Sheba River near a place called 
the Tel the, the Tel Abib. Not many miles from the city of Babylon itself. The fact that these Hebrew exiles in Babylon were being treated well did not really compensate for the inner agony of the soul. The frustration of being torn away from their homeland. It is not only now, but it has always been, my brothers and my sisters, that material things will not satisfy the soul. Has never been in time of history ever made anyone happy and make anyone happy now or will ever make anyone happy. Ezekiel had a considerably a great amount of wealth but yet he was depressed deep inside of him he was not happy because he was torn he was taken away from the homeland Jerusalem in Israel into exile in Babylon they had to leave their beloved Jerusalem they had to leave the temple that God has given them for worship and the presence of their God in the most holy place. In our day, it is a bit difficult to understand the agony of young Ezekiel and his fellow countrymen. But they were God's unique and chosen people, even though they had sinned against him repeatedly and now were suffering the consequences of their disobedience. They knew they were a people of destiny. So we want to look into this great book together this morning and first let's see if we can sense something of Ezekiel's agony in this foreign land called Babylon. The opening scene uh, is really a uh, streaking. The time was late in what we would call the month of June. 593 years before the Lord Jesus Christ was born into this world. A dust storm had swirled out of the desert into the flat, irrigated plain where we might imagine Ezekiel was tilling the small garden plot in which he raised vegetable for his family. When a dust storm comes, most people hide their faces, lest those uh, smarting, gritty particles of dust get into their eyes. But Ezekiel faced the storm and while it buffeted him in its fury, he saw high motion and glory. As the vivid imagination of this young priest was activated, God revealed himself to him out of the storm cloud. I don't know what storm you are experiencing right now. We all, we all know that the world is facing the storm of COVID-19 and we know some people are facing the storm of uh, of death and the loss of loved ones, the storm of sickness, the storm of war in the world, the storm of pain. Ezekiel remained attentive. 
Ezekiel kept his eyes open even when it was difficult to do so with all these uh, sand coming at him to blind him and to cause irritation in his eye Ezekiel kept his eyes open oh may in the midst of your storm do not really give up keep your eyes open and we will see together uh, what happened with this great priest the man of God Ezekiel through the storm that he has faced at that time as the Sheba River flowed through the fertile plains of Babylon it seems to be silently mocking Ezekiel your God has failed you where is the God of Abraham where is the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob where is the God who lives in your precious temple in Jerusalem as Ezekiel faced the river this is what it seems to shout in the derision to him it was as though the young priest Ezekiel doomed to a biological existence until he died and his family laid his body and his and this a, a foreign a foreign land and this foreign country there was nothing to live for there was nothing to look forward to that he was going to live the rest of his life in captivity he had grown up believing himself to be an heir of God's promise to Abraham but the future contained for him no promise no hope and no God am I speaking to someone here this morning what has COVID-19 and the circumstances around you is causing you to think right now now there is no promise no hope no God crisis that are almost intolerable come into all of our lives eventually we are just to the tragedy of losing a loved one but living trouble never goes away this was Ezekiel's plight he could not turn at all away from his bitterness he could not escape his loneliness for his homeland and his God but many of his people were adjusting and it seemed to Ezekiel that the terrible cancer of complacency was eating away at them oh yes let us appeal to ourselves in the midst of the storm of COVID-19 in the midst of the storm of losing a loved one or uh, in the midst of the storm of sickness or pain that we are not now complacent and forget to worship forget to uh, to pray forget to spend time with the Lord in his word forget to really live our lives before the Lord in gratitude acknowledging his goodness towards us complacency can really send us in a very dark place the thinking this is the way things are 
and this is the way things are always going to be. Yes, we feel like the children of Israel and Ezekiel that we have been away from God's temple. We have been away from the worship. We have been away from the gathering. But wait, let's look again at this despondent, broken-hearted young man, Ezekiel. Suddenly, we see him square his shoulders as if to say, No, I will not give in to my feelings. I will not say it is all over. Our God is the only God and he is all powerful and he knows where we are even today. Secondly, let us thus we have the ecstasy of Ezekiel as this lonely young exile stood on the river bank he saw a dark cloud coming down from the north the storm cloud was what people now call a dust devil there are times during the day when a dust devil may be filled with strange iridescent colors as the sun glints against the, the sun the sun and, and particles of filling the clouds Ezekiel was watched and he watched afraid but fascinated while the storm cloud drew nearer slowly with the eyes of spiritual vision he began to see uh, shining through this dust cloud the infinite glory of our God and to Ezekiel it was the blazing dazzling flame of hope most of chapter 1 describes the chariot throne upon which the glory rode. King rode in chariots in those days. So Ezekiel saw a conquering, uh, a conqueror's chariot coming down from the home of the Babylonian gods who dwelled according to pagan belief in the mysterious mountains to the north with the spirit of god activating the creative imagination of this young priest ezekiel set about to describe what he saw sometimes it is difficult for us to understand the prof the, the poetic oriental symbolism of Ezekiel but we need to remember that Ezekiel was using all that he had human words words invented to describe what a person sees and feels around him and around himself or herself to describe the glory of God can you imagine the frustration he felt as he began to probe into his vocabulary trying to to come up with words with which he could describe God but does it boil down to men cannot describe God he is undescribable he is beyond my words can describe. He is beyond my imagination and my ways of pinning him down to look like. But we 
can experience him and can commune with him in our souls because our soul our souls are the breath of that God himself we were made in a, in a way that we are capable to communicate with the God of heaven because he has breathed upon us the breath of life we can know that he knows us and can reveal himself to us in his own unique way even in a dust devil of a storm like Ezekiel was experiencing so the first chapter in Ezekiel's book is symbolism it is designed to help us think about the majesty the glory and the magnificence of God yes it is designed so, so that you and I can have a glimpse of what it is like what is a symbol it is the use of one thing to suggest another there are three things we need to remember about the symbols that will help us understand not only Ezekiel but many other portions of the Holy Scriptures. First, a symbol does not need to look, sound, smell or taste like the things that it symbolizes all it must do is suggest to us an idea second a symbol speak to our imagination when the captain of a ship uh, sees a green light in the darkness he imagines another ship and can tell in what direction that other ship is going. Third, a symbol can have many meanings and not always does it symbolizes the same thing. Jesus used symbols often. I am the door, he said. We understand that symbolize of God in scripture bring us close to him. Yes, if you ask him for a sign, you ask him for a symbol, he will give it to you. Many have asked and he has given them a sign, a symbol of which they can digest and recognize him how do you know that it is the voice of god how do you know that it is the presence of the lord how do you know that the lord god is in our means thirdly god in the storm as ezekiel describes him to us Although the Bible, uh, although uh, the, the the Bible, uh, we find rich symbolism in numbers, and all through the Bible, there are symbolism. There are number of of them all throughout the Bible. The number four usually represent this world the four corners of the earth we said the four winds the four seasons this chariot throne Ezekiel saw in the midst of the storm cloud is described in terms of four 
there were four living creatures, each with four faces and four wings. They were piloting, uh, they were piloting a, a four wheel vehicle. What did it mean? What was all these number fours trying to communicate to you and then to me? It means that the glory of God filled the whole earth. He was not confined to a temple in Jerusalem or a church where you used to go. God is in all the four corners of the world. His presence filled the whole earth. What did really these four corners really mean? Not only to Ezekiel, but to you and I in 2022. Yes, we miss our gathering together, our worshiping together. But God is where you are right now worshiping. God is everywhere. His presence is with us, whether we worship in the temple or we worship at home or we worship under the tree. He was not confined to our temple or our church. Nor was he, nor, nor was he enthroned in some distant heaven. He was here by the Sheba River, ready to comfort and strengthen the young priest Ezekiel. Yes, my friend, God is here. God is where you are right now. And as he was ready to comfort Ezekiel, he's ready to comfort you too. He is ready to write away your tears. He is ready to give you light in the darkness. He is here by my river of crisis by uh, the crisis that we are now facing by the trouble that are in our lives by the heartbreak and heartbreaking situations that you face and i face Whatever the name you would like to put that you are in, whether it is COVID-19 or sickness or exams or whatever the situation may be, God is here. That is the message of the first chapter of the book of Ezekiel. That he is here. He is here with you in your trouble. He is here to comfort and he is here to provide guidance and light in whatever the situation you have named that you all are in right now. And what else do we see about Ezekiel's chariot? It had wheels. The wheel is a symbol of motion. We do not worship a God who is impassive to us. He is a God of personality who loves us and knows us by name. He is a God of action. He is a God of accomplishment. The great songwriter of a contemporary song he knows my name he knows where i am he knows what i am going through and he is not motionless the eyes 
in Ezekiel's vision symbolize the all-seeing God, a God of total awareness concerning his creatures. The eyes of the Lord is upon you. The eyes of the Lord is upon this world. The eyes of the Lord is upon your family. The eyes of the, uh, of the Lord is upon your community. The eyes of the Lord is looking at us even at this moment as we worship him. Through this experience, Ezekiel came to know God not just about him. He has got closer to the Lord. He has got to know him in a very personal way, in a very intimate way. I dare you ask and call upon the Lord right now as you hear God's word and God's message. I dare you to call upon the name of the Lord to come in, into your heart, into your life, into your family, into your community, and that you will not sense his presence with you even as we speak. He's a God of motion. When we call, he answer to our call and he comes. He moves by our problems and our trials and our pain and our uh, trouble in this world. Ezekiel and his people knew the facts of faith. Oh, may you and I also learn about the facts of faith. But when they came to the Sheba River and all that is represented, facts were not enough. They needed a first-hand meeting with God you see, when we surrender to him, he teaches us to open our eyes while the, the sun storms of our life is blowing, while the difficulties are all around, while we feel that we are joining. He opens our eyes while the sun storms is blowing and although all of that chaos and horror, he shows us his glory and we hear him say, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we thank you that in, in the midst of the storms of life, we can be rest assured as according to your word today that you are with us. The storms of relationships, the, for, the storms of family problems, the storms of work, the storms of COVID, the storms of losing a, lo a, a loved one, all the difficulties and all the storms of our life, O oh Lord. Thank you that we can be rest assured as your word has spoken to us this morning that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen.